Uh, incarcerated individuals still have rights. They still have rights. They lose some because of their incarceration status, but they are still considered living human beings. As such, they should be treated with some level of dignity and respect. Uh, respect, that's a big word you hear in prison. You gotta respect me, you gotta respect me. They're full of crap. Anybody that tells you that, they're selling you a bill of crap. You earn respect, okay? And in a polite society, you know, respect is earned. Who's heard that saying, you treat people the way you want to be treated? Yeah, right? Everybody agrees with that, right? We all agree on that? Okay, I get up in the morning. I feel pretty good. First thing I want my wife to do is just kick me in the ass as hard as you can, because that really motivates me. Just go in, baby. Well, I'm, bam, be a good one. That's the way I want to be treated. Should I treat you guys like that? Good morning. Who wants a big kick in the ass? Get you going. Wait a minute. We all just agree. We treat you the way I want to be treated. What happened? It didn't work, did it? Did it? No, no right? Okay, come on. Wake up. Wake up. No, of course not. You don't treat people the way you want to be treated. I think I just showed you that. You treat people the way they want to be treated. It's a misconception, but it works. They show you the respect. They talk to you polite. They come at you in the correct manner. You do the same in return. No, no reason to be ugly with them. But what if somebody comes at you angry, belligerent, Yelling, especially you guys that work retail. I don't know how you keep your cool. God damn it, you can't even make a fry bag that spill coming out of their mouth. And I see these poor kids back there. And the customer is not always right. I could have lost five minutes in that environment. That's wrong. You treat people the way they want to be treated, the way they earn to be treated. And it works. Like, I work at Texas Roadhouse, and I work as a busser. Right. And I love when people complain about how their food's not cooked well. I'm like, when you guys leave, I take the food and just throw it away. Like, what do we want me to do about it? I don't cook the food. I don't right? cook the food. I but has anybody ever got real ugly with any of them? Is that uh, kind of yeah, he threatened to punch me once. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because he said I, uh, I wouldn't take it to the back. I said, I'll get your server because I, I don't work in the back. Like, I, I just throw away stuff. Like, I don't the food at all. What, you just bust the table over? Yeah, no. or I work in the back of the bar too. Oh, okay. So, fun fun. That's even worse, working at a bar. What you got there? I had a call to talk to, uh, I had a call to cost on a lady like two days ago. So she was trying to kill, kill everybody in the store. Oh, kill no. everybody in the store. <laughs> Which store is it? Uh, Big Lots. <laughs> Big Lots? Big Lots. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I almost got into a fight with a group of dudes because I brought them a drink, but they thought it was a different drink and they were already drunk. So, in their mind, they doesn't were take much, right? Dumb. You guys got something? Dumb. Yeah. It sounds good over there, man. Yeah, that's that's the, the, come on, share. That's the way he complains about their orders. You tell them there's no prizes or anything. And just keep going. Just keep going. Okay. We deal with it. In, so, you don't work in retail either, I guess. I could do it, guys, but I have respect for the people who do. Even when they totally screw up. So, if somebody's in training, right? And then somebody's looking over their shoulder. They're nervous as heck. Most often they get the order wrong. But if it, that's fine. You know, take your time, relax, try to work with them. You get more with honey, right? Than being an idiot. Especially people handling your food. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you get the idea. Cruel, unusual punishment. Everybody has that right to be treated. Just because somebody's locked up, they don't lose that right. They lose a lot of other stuff. But you treat people the way they ask to be treated. So let's talk about excessive fines and bail. What are we talking about? Prohibition of excessive fines, specifically. More? What are we talking about? Thousand 
thousand dollar fine for five months. Uh, should everybody who speeds get a ticket? No. <laughs> yeah, you walk in, you know that one. Uh, no. You're late because you just got a ticket? No. No, okay, yeah. Um, Sergeant Pett was here. He I talked about Was it? No, 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 no. The, the Busser. Busser, that's it. The guest, the guest guy that we had coming. Uh, he actually told you that. Yeah. That unless you're going like 10 plus, he's not going to even look twice your way. There's two ways to enforce the law. Okay? Only two. Anybody want to take a guess? Spirit of the law, letter of the law. Yes. Spirit of the law, letter of the law. Okay. Spirit of the law is we want people to be safe. All right. We don't want you getting in accidents or injuring innocent uh, people. So that's why we have rules, we have laws, we have regulations. And an officer who enforces the spirit of the law keeps that in mind. Letter of the law. You go 56 miles an hour, you committed a violation of the speed limit, which was posted at 55. You can be cited for that. But should you? No. No. No, that's a waste of time. I'm driving down I-5 coming from, I don't even know where, probably Magic Mountain, driving a Suburban. This was a long time ago, 95, 96. So I'm driving my Suburban. I got all the kids in there, my wife's on this side, and I wasn't really paying attention how fast I was going. I'm on I-5, speed limit might have been 55 at that time, when they were doing that crazy thing. Or if it was 65, I don't know, but I was going over. So if it was 65, I was going maybe 80, hmm. and picking up speed. And I was, just, I was daydreaming. Never even saw the highway patrol come up alongside me. She was a chunky female officer. I could still see her smile. Right? I could see her smiling at me. She pulled up alongside, and I'm just driving. I don't know how long she was there. <laughs> Finally, I, I glance down, she's laughing. She waves at me. I wave back, and she just goes, thank you. That was it. That was it. Learn my lesson. That's all it took. I thought, what an awesome cop. Enforcing the spirit of the law. Think about it. What kind of officer would you like to be? Letter of the law? No. Spirit of the law. Hopefully you guys do spirit of the law. Excessive fines keep that type of mindset. Keep the fines reasonable within a person's ability to pay. Don't exceed that. Well, the book says I can charge you $10,000 per violation, and you're sitting here with three of them. So I'm going to impose a $30,000 fine. And you're sitting there wondering how you're going to pick up a carton of milk so you can feed your kids. That ain't right. The trend has changed. And it carries over to the uh, bail. But it, the idea is people should be held accountable to their ability to pay. If I'm a multimillionaire, and I got millions of dollars in the bank, and the court tells me I have to pay $30,000 in fines. Do I really care? Not really. I don't. Put a lot of my black diner's club card. There you go, Judge. I didn't learn a damn thing. I do the same thing to this person who's looking to buy a carton of milk, $30,000. That guy's going to be suicidal. No, tip them over the edge. That's not what we want. We want to keep the fines reasonable. The court really has moved towards that to try to keep fines reasonable. Where we're failing is on bail. Bail is there's a schedule, and they have it. Has anybody been booked in the county recently? No. No. Good. Yeah, that was a long time ago. If you ever booked or toured the county. Uh, when you're doing the pay events, you're getting cross. Now they don't even use it. They use laser prints. Somebody was talking about they do laser prints. Is that in this class? They got a job and that's all they're doing now is laser printing people? Okay. Well, we used to have to run ink. We were taught how to roll prints and all this other wonderful stuff. <clears throat> right where they do that, if you look up, there's usually a list of bail bondsmen 
and then the bail schedule. So depending on which penal code you're being arrested for, there is a set standard what that bail should be. Most often, it's too much money. Let's just say it's a DUI. It's a shame, don't ever drive under the influence. Please, just don't do that. But if someone did, and you're sitting there, you're getting booked, and if you look up first infraction DUI, hmm, $5,000 bail. $5,000. Damn. That's just to kick it off. There's going to be other fines once you get found guilty in court. So $5,000 bail to secure your freedom. So you don't have to stay in jail. I got to pay $5,000. And of course, promise to appear for all my uh, hearings, my court dates. Anybody think that's fair? Pay for your freedom. How do you get exempt from that? That's if you're going through a bondsman. And I'm going to explain how the bonds work on oh. which is a lucrative business, by the way. Yeah, but if you want to make your own release, write a check, give them a credit card, whatever it is, $5,000. The county holds it. If you make all your court dates, you do get it back minus some processing fees. And they'll tell you right up front. It's only like 100 bucks or something. So you're gonna get the majority of it back. Who has $5,000 just sitting somewhere? No. My niece got arrested for something stupid years and years ago. So my aunt called, we, we gotta help her, we gotta help her. So the best way to help her, leave her there. It was like on a Friday. She said, well, they're not going to get to her until Monday. That's fine. She'll learn a lesson. She called my dad, and he went down, and they bailed her out. I said, what a dumbass move that was. That's what my daughter did. She called my wife to get bailed out. See, no. Leave them there. I want to leave her there. Leave her there. <laughs> Come more, uh, Monday morning, they'll have their arraignment. Most likely, they'll be released, because they don't want to threaten anybody. But they're going to teach them a lesson. Don't do that again. So anyway. She didn't have the money. My dad just signed for her for a bondsman. Uh, and it depends, it used to be 10% down. Now they'll go as low as four, depending on the bail bondsman is, your credit, uh, if you have any equity, anything like that that you can use to secure the bond. That is non-refundable. So let's just say it's $100,000 bond. And we'll go with bonds that we used to be 10% flat, no talking. That's 10,000 you're giving to somebody because they're writing that check or a bond for 100,000. That if you fail to appear, that bondsman is out that $100,000. That's where bounty hunters come in. They're gonna come get you and they ain't gonna be none. They ain't gonna be, my business, uh, I did investigations, okay? I did just criminal cases. Uh, but a couple of my buddies, the big Samoan guys, they wanted to be bounty hunters. I said, no. The insurance on that is ridiculous. Arizona Missions Insurance, I said, I'm not doing it. Uh, I did tell them, I will hire you to do security, to be personal uh, security for, you know, executives and stuff like my brothers. Were. They took the offer. But bounty hunters, once they get that order from the court to find an arrest, like that dog guy, dog the dog the bounty hunter. Yeah, he's with us. Yeah, he's with us. But he can't carry a firearm because of his prior history. That's why he has the other people. They carry firearms. If you don't have a history, you can carry a firearm. You can knock indoors. You can go right in, just like they show on TV. That one in face. They're ugly, and sometimes it does get pretty ugly. It's easier to get a loved one to sell them out. It really is. They'll set them up nine out of ten times for you. Uh, yeah. Do you make the amount uh, for the guy or how much do they make? It just depends, you know, where you're at. Probably around this area, you see pretty good, but it's high risk, right? Uh, high risk, high reward. I don't like that. I'm not a gambler. I do the sure things. Matter of fact, I got a call from an attorney in Fresno wanted to hire me. Bilingual. If you're a bilingual, licensed investigator, you can write your own ticket. I don't even know where they wanted to send me. Because it was a federal case, it was, I said, I ain't got time. Do you know anybody? I can help them. 
I had worked for this guy like in six, eight years. And they're still looking. Okay, so bond, excessive bail. Bail in itself, we're moving away. We don't want to make people have to give up everything they own just for the right to not be locked up. It just doesn't make sense. Manhattan Bail Project, they did this years and years ago. They did studies, there are no studies so on. If anybody ever works on a doctorate, look at bail. Two issues, bail and recidivism for a doctorate program. So anyway, bail, it doesn't do what it's supposed to do, and that's to secure an appearance from the accused. It really doesn't. But if somebody that has a job, okay, they have a stake in the community. Maybe they're a homeowner. They have a family. They did something stupid. There's a $10,000 bail. You're the judge. Okay? You're the judge. You make the call. This person has a job, works at some computer company. It's been there for 15 years. Owns a home. Married. Uh, three kids. The oldest is 12 now. Maybe got a DUI. You're looking at a $10,000 bail. You're the judge. Are you going to impose that bail or are you going to release them on OR? They're overcompensated, meaning they promise to go to court as ordered. So those are your choices. $10,000 bail, OR. Do you have, have any other history? None. First offense. None. Good question, yeah. First offense. Never been in trouble with the law. OR. OR. Who's going to impose bail? Okay, so OR, everybody? Yes? Yes, sir. I'm moving your hand. Thank you. Thank you. You okay? What the hell you got back on? It's starting to crack. What's in there? It's an ice cream and cheese. Is that not Starbucks? No, it's Dunkin'. Dunkin' Donuts? Mm -hmm. But these things fascinate me, okay? I met Starbucks last night. I wanted to buy a coffee. It took 10 minutes. <laughs> if I want a coffee. My heart cold. Coffee is hot. No, it's it's cold. They make it cold. I didn't know. Anyway, sorry. I went sidetracked. Uh, so bail. It's not fair for a majority. A majority of the population. Even if you have a comfortable life, you're doing okay. They hit you with a ten thousand dollar bail. Bail. Your best option is probably going to have to be the secure bondsman. And whatever he paid that bondsman, you'll never see again. It's gone. That's his fee or her fee. Questions about bail or excessive fines? How about cruel and unusual punishment? Yeah, sir. Can you elaborate more on the bondsman? On the bondsman? You don't know how to make some money. Huh? No. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Uh, I had a couple buddies. They, they started up their own bond business. Evacuation, it's an old. Uh, this is a drill. Drill. This is a drill. But we have to go there. Please evacuate the building. Please proceed to the emergency assembly area. Building captains wearing yellow vests can assist you in this evacuation drill. Leave everything Thank where you. it is. We're going to be back. <laughs>